to start. Yeah. I wish I could whistle. Uh, relationship. 
okay? And, and one of the things he talked about, you know, was fasting. And what are you fasting for? Uh, are you trying to blackmail God? You know, a lot of people do. They, they fast. They think, well, God's got to answer me if I fast. And they try to put God's back up against the wall, not even realizing. And I've heard this from preachers. I've actually heard this. And they've said things like, uh, yeah, well, you know, I wanted God to answer, so I fasted. You're, you're blackmailing God. It is, see, you've got to understand, this is how I deal with fasting. If you haven't got the basics down, what are you fasting for? Think about that. If you ain't got the basics down, it's extra credit. God only called one, one day of fast. That's the day of atonement. You afflict your souls. That's, uh, you know, that's in September. Okay, that's what God called for as far as from the nation of Israel. Now, he hasn't done that with the church. You know why he doesn't really call that for the church? We have the bridegroom. He that has the bride. How can they, how can they fast when they have the bride? I have the bridegroom. It, it's not a need. If I, but I, I do it. Every once in a while, I'll do it, you know. Um, it's actually healthy, too. Starve a fever, feed a cold. We're actually starve a, yeah, it's starve a cold. Feed a fever, starve a cold, right? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because it helps your immune system. But, like I said, these guys were doing it for different reasons. They were doing it like, oh, well, you know, look, uh, I'm doing it because I, I want to be special. Where I'm doing that like the Pharisee said. I fast twice a week. I'm not like this guy. God, that guy left justified. What about the Pharisee? He left justified. But yet he was doing all the things. I see it, like I said, I see this. I see the preachers get up and I, you know, you'll ask them, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking for God to move in my life. And the first thing he'll say, sometimes he'll say to you, have you fasted yet? What do I need to fast for? Think about it. I mean, I, I just want to hear from God. Why don't you fast? I fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke 18. Get in there. <laughs> it, it's something It's something I've seen for a long time. Look, if you ain't got past the basics, what are you worried about that for? Amen? All right. So uh, now we're going to look at uh, uh, chapter 59. Now, in chapter 59, it's going to be two parts. Okay, the first part is going to be the wages of sin from uh, verses 1 to 15. And then the second part starts in verse number 16. You can see the paragraph separator. And in that part, it's going to talk about the Savior. See, God's like this. He, he want, he, he'll turn around and he'll tell you causation. He'll say, this is why the problem is. Uh, but uh, he, God likes to give the cure. He doesn't want you to stay there. That's what he's saying. I want you closer to me. Okay, why have you not gotten closer to me? Hey, Lord, I'm in trouble. I don't want to. Uh, how many times you heard this? I just don't. I just don't feel right. I can't go to church. Well, that's what church is for. Well, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not uh, exactly. I'm depressed. I don't want to go to church. Well, uh, exhortation, edification, and comfort. Why aren't you at church? Yeah, not. You know. Well, I just don't. You don't have an excuse. You have to understand. There's no excuse. Okay, now I'm not talking about health reasons. I'm just talking about uh, more of a psychological reasons. Okay, obviously, if you can't get up, you can't feel well or something like that. Don't come in here to lay on the floor. You know, it's not, you get what I'm saying, okay? Uh, but at least be honest. I mean, you're not, I could care, you know, think about it. What do we care? It's, you're the ones going to have the problem, not me. So uh, that's how we have to look, okay? I mean, there are some people, I got people uh, that, that uh, they got no other way. They got to. They got to do. They got to figure out a way. What do they do? They go. They, they watch it on like YouTube or or whatever. Why? They need to. They need to hear something. If you can't get the breath, you got to get something right. And, you know, um, during the week, I don't get preached to that much. Actually, YouTube is my preacher. I go on there. I put on certain uh, preachers, and and uh, even when I go to go gym or something like that. I, I put them in my ears or something, and I listen. I, I, I need that because I don't get it enough. I, I need that. I need to get into a reality too. Amen. So uh, uh, let's look at what God has to say. Like I said, the first two verses we uh, we always um, use those two verses in a salvation message. Great verses, and uh, the Bible says in uh, uh, chapter fifty nine, "Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save." Neither his ear heavy, that it, the ear, cannot hear. But your iniquities, 
have separated between you and your God and, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That's important. He will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and, and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Father, bless thy word tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, hey, Maggie, how you doing? I just wanted to say hi. She just comes on. Hey, Maggie. Amen. All right. Now, uh, that first part, he says, behold, the Lord's hand is, is not short that it cannot save. I mean, who God, who wouldn't God save? I mean, even, even to a point where uh, you could be talking in that verse about, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, in a car wreck or something like that. God can save you anytime he wants. We know these things. Okay, I, I've had it in my lifetime. I've I've, I've been uh, wondering why this I should have been gone and it didn't happen. Uh, we were out street preaching uh, in Syracuse. A, a man came up, grabbed my friend, threw him into the street with traffic. Uh, we thought that was it, and uh, he didn't get hit. And we still can't figure out what happened. Now I know who happened, but I don't know what happened. Okay. All I know is he was on the. He was fine. It, it, he was okay. Thrown into the street with cars moving. He's fine. Never got hit. I have no idea. I have no idea of how it happened. I just know who an idea of who happened. Amen. But uh, his hand, the Lord's hand, is not short, and he can. He saves. And uh, it, look at that next part. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot. Here, you know what's happening in that part is people are always been asking, why won't God answer me? Why is it that God is not answering my prayers? I actually ask that once in a while. I'll see people getting their prayers answered, and, and I I watched it. I watched people getting their prayers answered, and I have actually sat down and said, Lord, you answered His prayer, and, and you answered her prayer. Uh, what about mine? Why can't I get my prayer answered, Lord? I've actually brought that to the Lord. And, uh, and, and to get the answer, this is the thing with most people. You pray for that, but you don't like the answer. What, what happens when God sticks in right in your face? Most people, I, I'm going to tell you, though, they don't want to hear it. Uh, God's, God right now, the Lord, in our church, think about I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about the physical, I'm talking about the church. Okay? The church, God says, that if you'll hear his voice, what is his voice? Rebuke and chastening. You're getting rebuked a lot. Why? Well, that's the people's church now. We we obviously uh, in the side when we look at the times of our church being a, a, the Laodicean church of the Laodiceans, it's the people's church. Obviously, there's something wrong going on that the people have the church. Okay, God's not in control of the church. Who's in control of the church? The people are getting in control. Why? They took over. Isn't that the way of all everything now? You know? And, and we wonder, why isn't God so heavy in the church? I hear it all the time. God is moving in the church. i got to tell you so far from it, you don't even understand. If God was to move like most of these preachers say He's moving in the church, everybody would be dead. Why? Well, Ananias and Sapphira, they, all they did was, uh, you know, they didn't do that much. Kept part of the money back. You know, that they would lie to the Holy Ghost. They let Satan come in, that they lie to the Holy Ghost. Oh, well, let me ask you something. How many times you lied to the Holy Ghost? We know they lied once. They died. How many times you lied to the Holy Ghost? 
How many times have you not met a prayer and actually prayed it anyway? Who are you lying to? Think about that. How about when you're supposed to, somebody asks you, why don't you be concerned and pray for somebody and you don't even do it? And you said you would. Think about it. You do these things. So you, he's asking the question, why won't you answer my prayer? Well, here's the answer. It's in the next one. It's because of your, your iniquities. It's because of you. Your iniquities, he says, have separated between you and your God. He says your sins. He makes sure, he, look, you don't know what iniquity means? I'll tell you again, your sins. you you got a problem with me, God's saying. And it's your sins right here, okay? Um, and and I, he's hid his face from you, okay? Uh, uh, God's, uh, you got to understand, God's trying to tell you, I'm not the problem. Why is that? Because you think he is. You keep going to him wondering why he's not answering you, but you haven't thought one time to think you're the problem. I'm right. You look, evaluate yourself for a little bit. I mean, how many times have you, have you done something wrong and haven't gone back and corrected it? Just keep going on and keep going on and think God's going to jump back into your life. Well, I'm doing good now. Well, think about it. What if Jesus went halfway to the cross? You get what I'm saying? What's that? You're playing halfway. you got to play the full way. you got to go back and pick up the stick, man. you got to go back and find out where you dropped it. Okay? First Kings chapter 6. Where's that? They lost the axe head. Where'd you lose it? The power was the axe head. Where'd they lose it? Where'd you, get, where'd you lose this power you had? Uh, where'd you lose it? Where'd you lose it? I, 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 I just don't feel it no more. Well, where'd you lose it? Okay? Hey, look, you've read your Bible. There's times when you're reading your Bible and for some reason it's clicking. Everything's clicking. And then you realize that sometimes it's not clicking. And what's happening? There's something wrong. Let's get back in there and twist it a little. Lord, why is this happening? Okay, you're a sin. And God says, hey, look, we got a problem here. What's that? Your iniquities. Why can't I get a prayer answer? Well, you're, you've got a problem here. we got a sin in the middle. And, and we got to get rid of that first. Okay, and that's what he's basically saying. It's separated, it has separated us. He goes, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. God's not the problem here. You're the problem. Okay? Okay. Uh, and, and, and spiritually, the uh, you have to understand something. Only God sees iniquity. See, that's the thing there. God sees the iniquity. You're, I can't see the iniquity that's in, in Brother Larry. He's got iniquity in him. There's iniquity there. Uh, he wouldn't keep sinning if there was an iniquity. Look, you have to realize something. There's always been iniquity before the sin. Why is that? You've got to think about it first. And then it becomes the sin of transgression. Okay? Tra trans changes over to aggression. Okay? That's, your, that's the difference. Okay? Look at verse number 12. He says, look, for our transgressions are, what, are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. You see, uh, it changed over to transgression. Now, here's the thing about God. God understands you've got iniquity. Hey, look, the devil had iniquity. Satan had iniquity till iniquity was found in thee. Okay? But God waited until it was appeared out and was made manifest by transgression, and then he did something about it. And just like Adam. Come on, people, you got to think about it. Adam had to think about eating that fruit before he ate it. You hearkened unto your wife. She obviously said something and convinced them. Okay, we talked about that this morning. She nagged and nagged and nagged. Okay, I'll take it. You hearkened unto the voice of your wife. Okay, and that, look at them all laughing. They know that they know. <laughs> but look, he, uh, he, 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 he did. He started to think about it. And then he transgressed. You notice how God didn't come in until after? Well, he does, look, once it's transgressed, everybody knows about it. It's out in the open now. That's when God comes in. Okay? It's just like the leper. The leper, the white, there's two different leprosies, white leprosy and black leprosy. One is inside, nobody sees it. Simon the leper, when Jesus was with him. Nobody realized that Simon's a leper, it wasn't on the inside. Same with Naaman, it's on the inside. 
Okay, it's a white leprosy. And God says, just let him go, just let him go. And then it became, when it becomes the black leprosy and it comes on the outside, God put him away, get him out of here. Why? Because now it's on the outside, now it's affecting everything. You see, but he didn't tell you to get rid of the get rid of that leper, had white leprosy. But only Jesus knew it when he was in the room. And there's there's Mary down with the alabaster box, and, and the Lord's sitting there with Simon, looking at him, going, Yeah, you're a leper. What's that? You got iniquity, you got some bad sin inside you. And he he's he's there hitting on the girl. Hey, uh, if you know what kind of woman she is, and he's looking at her like you're a leper. But nobody else in the room knew he was a leper. Maybe his son knew he was a leper, obviously, because uh, Judas was in the room. And uh, Judas was Simon's son, Simon the Pharisee's son. Look it up. It says Simon's son. And you'll notice something about that. He never healed Simon. Maybe that's the reason Judas did it. Nobody ever thinks these things. Look, you've got to have a reason to get mad. <coughs> Maybe that's the reason. Amen? All right, so he says... He, he tells him, he says, it, it's your iniquity. It's your iniquity, you know. Uh, it starts It starts in the heart, basically, and then it moves out. He says, uh, he says in here, he says, he has hid his face. Hid his face. Go, to, uh, go back to Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. He's hid his face from thee. We've been hearing this in, uh, in Isaiah, that he hid his face. Uh, when did we hear it before? Well, let's go over to chapter 8. Isaiah, back in Isaiah chapter 8, look down at uh, verse number 16. He says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Verse 17, and I will wait upon the Lord that, what? Hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. He hided his face. That they've been fallen, they've broken, they've been snared. He hideth his face from them. Okay, so it's not the first time. He, he he hides his face sometimes. Go back to Isaiah chapter one. When he opens up the chap, chapter, he he wants a reason with them. Look at just before he he brings that out. He wants to re, he tells them about reasoning with them. Look what he says. He says, look at verse number 14. He says, uh, actually go to 13. He says, bring no more vain oblations. Uh, incense is an abomination unto me. Uh, the new moons and the Sabbaths, uh, the calling of the assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting, the prayer meeting, even your prayer meeting is, a, is iniquity. He said, look at next 14. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. I don't even like your feast anymore. They're your feasts. They're not even mine. You're not doing them to me. You're just having a good old time. He saw my soul hated. You, you don't. You understand something? God has a soul. Amen. Okay. And he says they are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear it. Verse fifteen. And when ye spread forth your hands. I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Why is that? Your hands are full of blood. I will not hear. I, I got a, we got a problem. Go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. says, and, and the burden of the Lord, shall, verse 36, and the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word, for every man's word shall be his burden. Why is that? For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. You, you know what, God? You pervert his words. He won't hear you. You want to pervert words, he ain't going to hear you. Amen. We'll be getting into that. <laughs> he says, look, I, I got a problem here. He goes, now look, we'll keep going down. He said He said in uh, verse number 3, back in uh, uh, chapter 59, he says, 
He says, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. You, you're not even listening. That's what he, he's like, you're not even listening, you're perverting things. You know what they keep perverting? They keep perverting my word. And that's what he wants to say to them. Look, you just keep perverting it. Look, I keep saying this. You keep correcting me and saying I'm saying this. Okay, you're dumbing me down, people. You know, you're dumbing me down all the time. I got preachers, they're dumbing me down all the time. You know, uh, God, God's with you no matter what. Hey, go to the bar. God will be with you. Don't worry about it. Hey, he's with you at the poker game. Hey, why don't you pray? You get more chips. Look, I, 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 people, I see these things. I mean, I watch people. Uh, you know, even when I was, uh, even when I was, you know, uh, unsaved, I used to see things. I go, you, I used to go to casinos a lot. I used to like to play blackjacks. He knows. <laughs> we won, but anyway, <laughs> we, we, uh, we would, we, we in there doing blackjack or something like that. All of a sudden, I'd look over. You know what I'd see? I'd see some, some person gambling. They'd go like this. I'd be like. Isn't that weird? I mean, God doesn't even want them want you to gamble, and there you are trying to trying to get it from God. God, let me win. <laughs> Why should come back here next week and make it a habit? <laughs> Don't be surprised if you lose. Why? Because then God might be able to get a hold of you. <laughs> Amen. So he, he he wants you to understand. You know, you just got iniquity in your heart. Uh, he look at verse number four. He says, uh, "None calleth for justice." Uh, nor any pleadeth for truth. It's not like they want those things. They, they, he says they trust in vanity, open things. Uh, they speak lies. They conceive what? Mischief. And, and they bring forth iniquity. Okay? Uh, this thing is intentional. It, it's, look, it's not, it's not a mistake, even. It's not an accident. It, it's intentional you can see they speak at lies they're talking these things they do it all the time i mean go to let's go over to uh, psalm 52. your sins they separate from you and your god i mean that's what separated you hey why ain't i getting a prayer answered do you, you realize it it's it look God can deal with the people that are that are out here that are very simple. Uh, they're 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 dumbed down. Uh, they're kids. But when it comes to you, who's searching for God, trying to get close to God, expect them to be more uh, to be more checking the blocks a little more, looking at you. Why? Because you're getting closer and closer. And when you get closer and closer, God wants to. He, he's getting more control that way. You get what I'm saying? Amen. You know, you're not going to get away with this much when uh, you get closer. Why? Because it's harder at the, as you get closer. The closest guy to, to, to God is also the closest guy to the devil. Amen? Amen. Okay, uh, Psalm uh, 52. Psalm 52. And let's, uh, let's just start out, uh, look at verse number 1. 52. And let's look at verse number one. And the Bible says, uh, I have to get it myself, 52. Uh, Why boastest thou thyself? Now watch what he says. In mischief, O mighty man. In mischief, O mighty man. The goodness of God endureth continually. Why is that? The tongue deviseth mischief. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully, it works it out. You know, very subtly, and, it, and, and guess what? It, it, it takes effort to do these things. It does. It takes effort to do these things. Hey, look, uh, uh, I, I remember we brought up about the uh, uh, idolatry. It takes effort to be an idolater. I mean, these guys are driving around, and they have to take that statue, and they have to carry it around with them. I mean, <laughs> it can't move itself. They're carrying it around. I love when people say things like this. I was watching one day these Roman Catholic church. They were coming down. I don't know what was in another country. They had a big statue of Mary. They're coming down. They're marching with this thing. All of a sudden, it falls. Some guy kind of slipped up, and it fell. Everybody's going, oh! You know, of course, we're laughing from watching. Hey, look at that. It's kind of sad, though. 
But you see how they carry it around? And then you'll ask them, you say, you know, you worship statues. They'll turn around and say, no, we, 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 we worship what it represents. You kiss what it represents too, huh? You're kissing a piece of wood. I mean, come on. I mean, here, here's my sneaker. Try that one. <laughs> And yeah, and it's an in, yeah, with the guy with the dollar up there and stuff like that, you know, uh, Fiducci. Amen. Yeah, it's crazy stuff, but they bore it. Hey, look, don't think not even the best do it. They're driving around on the streets during December. They got one on their hood. They got one on the top there, you know, driving. Hey, look, I'm sorry, people. Look, I'm sorry. I've heard every preacher. I've heard the commentaries. I've heard every preaching. Jeremiah 10, yeah, right. Yeah, right, buddy. Okay, I can see. They deck it with silver and gold and stand it upright. Well, you tell me what it is. Oh, well, they're getting a trip. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, keep talking that bull to me. <laughs> I can see what it is. What does God say it is? Idolatry. Learn not the way of the heathen. That's what they do. They're idolaters. I'm sorry, people. I'm not, look, I'm not trying to take your Christmas away. You can get that Christmas. I don't care if you put one up. I come to you, I, if I come in your house and I see it, I just go, okay, good enough, whatever. It's your house. Right. Just don't expect it to come into church and you see one sitting up at the top here. It's not happening. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So, look at this next part, he says. Verse number five. They hatch cockatrice eggs. That's a snake. A serpent, okay? They hatch cockatrice eggs. It's a po the poisonous snake eggs. And they weave the spider's web. He that eateth their eggs dieth. And that which is crushed, crushed breaketh out into a, a viper. You know, like hatching schemes? They're hatching schemes and you get involved in these things. You listen to these people that hatch these schemes. And guess what? It's like you're getting bit by a serpent. Hey, just so you know, what do you think they did to hatch a scheme to make new Bibles? It was a scheme, people. I mean, these guys, I, hey, look, I've heard it many times, and guys tell me, uh, they say, well, they weren't trying to do evil. They had good intentions. Yeah, the, the road to hell, hell was paved in good intentions. All right? That, no, I mean, the priest down the road, he doesn't want to send you to hell. He just doesn't know how to get to heaven. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest part of it. <laughs> And look, they hatch cockatrice. Like they're hatching schemes. They're rewriting scripture. Okay? They like doing these things. They're, they, they like playing with snakes, man. That's what it's all about. They like playing with those things. I'm not talking about the physical one. I'm talking about the spiritual ones. They like to play with that stuff. You know? Uh, they, they get to see it. And, and, and look at this. It says, they're webs. They're webs shall not become garment. You're not going to cover it up. They're like see-through, man. We can see them from a mile away coming. You an idolater, we're going to see it. Why? Because you ain't going to be able to hide it. I can go to every, whether it's a revival, whether it's a conference, whether it's a meeting or something like that, and there's idolatry there, you pick it up right there. You start to see it. And if you can't see it, you better start opening up your eyes to the book. Amen. Because the book how many people have now gotten through this part of Isaiah? All of you got through 59 chapters, and what has this part been all about? Idolatry, idolatry, idolatry. If after 59 chapters you can't figure out what idolatry is, you haven't really been here for the whole book. Amen? Because he was picking them out, picking them out, picking them out. Why? Because you needed it. <laughs> That's why. Amen. And, and here he says, he says, their webs, their webs shall not become like, become garments, neither shall they uh, cover themselves like Adam and Eve did. Get the aprons out, we'll cover ourselves up. Okay, we sin, but maybe if we, uh, we do some work here and, and we can, maybe we can fix it and God will be okay with it. And, and we're going to catch God. We, we got it, we're okay, God, we're okay. And God came right and get them things off, that ain't going to work. That's man. You're not going to cover this one up, he says. He says, uh, they cover themselves with their works. Their, uh, their works are works of what? Iniquity. They're bad from the heart. And the act of violence is, is in their hands. 
Uh, go over to uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 28. Chapter 28, Proverbs. This is what God says. You want to you want to uh, you want to shed innocent blood. You want to do all these things. You like the acts of violence is in your hands. Look at verse 17. 28 verse 17. A man that doeth violence to the blood of any person shall flee to the pit. Uh, let no man stay him. You know, we got guys doing it every day. We got people just going in and out, just getting innocent blood. They run the shed innocent blood. 500,000 a year in this country running to shed that innocent blood of children. Oh, well, you know, it's not a child. That they, yes, it is. I don't believe it. Who cares what you think? Your opinion doesn't matter here. God said it's a child. It's a child. God don't lie. And that's what you have to understand. Humans have human babies. They're not fetuses. When you start to use their lingo, you start to accept it. I knew you when you were in that womb, God said. Amen. Amen. He told you you were going to multiply. What did he say? You're going to multiply just a bunch of fetuses? You know why they call it that? So killing them doesn't sound too bad. That's exactly why they come up. They, I just killed a fetus. I didn't kill a child. You shed innocent blood. That's what you did. Okay? Now, I understand people are lost. That's what, that's what the world does. We don't have the problem in here, well, obviously. We're all over 50 years old in here. <laughs> Amen. So, so that's why I don't bring it up that much. He says, your webs, go to, here's another one, go to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah, hard book to find, uh, just, it's before Zechariah. Zephaniah and then Haggai. Keep Haggai, he went too far. They're the two. These are. Uh, I just stay with <laughs> Zephaniah, chapter. Zephaniah chapter uh, three, yeah. and uh, let's look down at verse number four. He says, "Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests, what they do? They polluted the sanctuary. They polluted the sanctuary. Hey, you know what?" The, the pastors, they're, they're polluting sanctuaries today. They're bringing out new stuff. They're bringing in modern stuff. Getting rid of uh, the words out of the even the hymns and stuff like that. It's all special songs and rock and roll. Uh, a bunch of hippies standing up on stage playing and everything. And you look at them, you're like, something's wrong here. Uh, this has really gotten bad. I remember one time I went to a church. I, I said Calvary... Calvary uh, Bible Church, where I went to, I walked in there. I thought, man, this is going to be this is a good church. I walked in. First thing I saw, I looked up. There was a stage. It wasn't a pulpit. It was a stage with a bar stool on it. The guy got up there, and he walks out. He's got flared bottoms with clogs on. And I'm just like, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Hair down to here. And he comes out, and he starts talking like some fairy. For preaching and, and he starts reading it wasn't obviously the King James and uh, I'm just sitting there like I go I'm in the wrong place I turned around I said to some I said to other people that were there is there a church around here that really preaches Bible <laughs> amen amen but um, he, he says he says they, they polluted the sanctuary look at the last part they have done violence They've done violence to the law. Is what he's saying. He, they've done violence to the law. Uh, the Lord, the just Lord, is, is in the midst thereof. Uh, is in the midst thereof. He, he will not do it anymore. That's not for the Lord. Amen. They do violence. You say, what do we mean? They do. They do violence. They're, it, it's hurtful. Amen. Go, go to the next verse up here. It says, Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting, and destruction are, are in their paths. Okay? Uh, God, God's word is, we proved one thing. You know something? One thing is proved. Even for the lost, God's, work, God's word still works down here. 
If you were to just read the book of Ecclesiastes, God's word does work actually in our world here. Hey, if somebody wants any money, go get a job. Why? God said work six days and rest one. You'll be okay. Look, if you work six days and you rest one, you'll be okay. But I ain't got a job. Go work outside your house and put a garden in. It's going to help your family. Okay? And it doesn't take exactly that much to do it. And you work at it, and you work at things, and, and when you do work at things, things work. Amen? I mean, it sounds weird when I said that, but it does. Okay? And things will work. God's ways work. He says their feet run the evil. What's that? We know that. They, shed, they make haste to shed innocent blood. We just talked about that. Okay? And then he says their, their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. God's ways work. And if not, you're doing it God's way. Guess what? you got wasting and destruction that are in your way. He says, he says in verse number 8, the, the way of peace, they, they don't know it. They know not the way, the way of peace. There is no judgment in their goings. Uh, it's like no different than you. When you're backslidden and you're upset and you're doing this and you think that, you're looking in the mirror and everybody else is wrong but you. And you know what God's probably saying? If he could be the other guy in the mirror, he's looking at you with, a, with the, going, hey, dummy, you're the guy that's wrong. Guy. You see it yet? You, ever, you haven't had that in your life? I mean, come on. You guys have been saved over 10 years. Let me tell you something. God has gotten pretty feisty with you, hasn't he? You sat there and you said, how many times have you talked, complained, and then all of a sudden at the end of your complaining, you don't even realize it, you actually corrected yourself. I can't believe you're actually talking like this. You know what that is? That's God on your conscience turning around and saying, hey, I'm going to answer you with you, dummy. You'll answer yourself right here. Hey, look at Jonah. Jonah's out there and he's got the gore. Hey, a, God's like he's out there all mad. I'm upset, I'm upset. Like you're going to change anything. You get what I'm saying? You can't change anything, man. That's what I'm... Look, uh, the election was stolen. We all got mad, right? But how'd you, did you change it? No. Yeah. What'd you get mad? Was it good to be mad? No, it wasn't. You wasted some time being angry. Yeah. Same with me. Same with me, man. We, uh, we wasted a lot of time. We're wasting a lot of time. We're wasting a lot of time with things we can't even... Look, I can't do anything about the shortages. I can't get the trucks in. I can't, can't get the trucks here. The only thing I can do is work, for my work with my family, okay? And, and get my family prepared. That's what I can do. I, I, that's what I should do. And, and not worry about why, they're new, why this is happening. Hey, look, I know why it's happening. It's called sin and iniquity. Why? Well, God told you right here. Wastings and destructions. That's what's coming. A world without God. Be prepared. Wasting and destruction is coming. You know, when they say peace and safety, then come sudden destruction. Right now they're saying, they're saying, we're trying to keep you safe. Well, guess what? You can't see it coming. They're going to start saying, we're keeping you peace. We're keeping the peace. Look, we got a bozo down in Washington that's turning around and telling everybody wants war with them. And guess what? They're not even looking for war. We've already had treaties against these things, and they're lying all over the news. We're not even allowed to formally say that Taiwan is its own country because we made the agreement way back in the beginning of this, uh, cent uh, beginning of this century. Yet he's on television right now saying, well, China this and China Taiwan. Look, buddy, you already have the agreement. Just shut your mouth. You're doing that for, for the news. I mean, this guy's going to drive us to a nuclear war? Come on. Even with Russia? We're not supposed to be in the Ukraine. What are we doing in there? That's the biggest lie going. Russia sacked the Ukraine weeks ago. Yes. This is all staged now. This is how sick it's become. Right. You know? Why? Because there's iniquity in the seat of judgment. You know? we can, Like I said, there's nothing we can do about it. We just watch the show. Just watch the show. Get ready to get out of here. Why are you so worried about the world? You can't even do anything about it. Look, people, you got to understand something. You can turn around and correct all this, and the world's still going to hell. Yeah. That's the reality of things. You know what we're doing? The boat the boat is broken up. The pieces, this, this all churches, all church is broken up, man, and, and the pieces are out there floating around. Okay? And there's people drowning. And you know what we're doing? Just grab one or two and try and get them onto the pieces so that at least they can float until the Lord comes along and saves us out of here. And that's what we're doing. Amen. Verse number 8, he says, the, the way of peace, they know not. They've got a crooked path. 
There's no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Look at that. I already got it. Whosoever go with their end, they're not going to know peace. You gotta, how are you going to know peace? you got a whole bunch of fake Bibles they're talking about. You've already turned yourself over from God's Word to something else. Now God ain't speaking to you. Like I said this morning, when God stops speaking to people, you know what happens? They start rolling on the floor and talking like babies. What are you doing? I'm praying. Well, how do you know if God's going to answer that prayer? You don't, he don't, you don't even know what you said, you dummy. They get up here and they do Greek and Hebrew. Why? Because God ain't speaking to them in English no more. They're just trying to find other ways. Why don't they just submit back to God, ask God, where can I find this? Where's your word? Because he's been telling them for a while, hey, man, this is my word, this is my word. And they don't want to listen. They just don't want to listen. Verse number 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. Huh, there's no truth. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait, look what it says, we wait for the light, but we behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in, in darkness. We don't even know the truth anymore. That's what has happened. you got iniquity. You start getting away from God. And guess what happens? You start to not even know the truth anymore. Hey, I can make it without this. Hey, look, I'll do my own church at home. I understand. You're not going to, well, you know, I, I pray every dinner table. over. The, yeah, right. I hear it all the time. Uh, every time I, I, I've been out, I've knocked on a door, and, and for a good amount of time, I get this one guy that shows up at the door and always says this to me. Uh, I, got, I, I, I got church right here at home. I, I meet with God at home. Uh, I praise, I worship here. Oh, really? What time? I'm like, what time? My, she was with me one time. We were over here on the road uh, over here, and a guy, we were in the backyard. I, I said to the guy, where, where, uh, where do you, when did, what time? The guy goes, what do you mean? I want to show up. Well, praise is for everybody, right? It's a public thing. So I said, he goes, he turns around and, oh, you know, you know. I said, okay, I, I do know. That's the thing. <laughs> God's been talking to these people. They're in darkness. They're in darkness. They don't even got any truth. Verse number 10. Verse number 10. We grope. We grope for the, for the wall uh, like the blind. You know what that is. You know what I'm talking about. They, they go like this, trying to touch walls, trying to touch things so they don't bang into everything. Okay, they grope uh, for the wall like, like the blind. And, and, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Uh, we are in desolate places as uh, dead men. You, you, it's like, you're, it's like you're, you're being blinded. By things. There's a remember uh, Jesus said the blind leaders of the blind they fall. You all fall into a ditch. Uh, that's what's happening today. I mean, you go down. You go down here. Uh, 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 remember Maggie was telling us about uh, Dave. He was he was down at this one church uh, down the road here, and he they had opened up your Bibles. He opened up his Bibles at the Reader's Digest there, and he was reading it. <laughs> you know what he said in the end? The guy ain't got nothing to say. You know what really he was saying? He's a blind guy, and I'm not, I'm not letting the blind leader lead me. Because I'll just be a blind man in the end, groping for the walls. You need the real book. Why? You need to be guided right. Stop with this stuff, okay? With the fake things. You need the truth. You don't need to be led by this. You know? If you have his word, if you have his word, why you keep reading something else? Oh, you know, I want to explain to me. I used to hear that one. I got the NIV because it's easier to read, and, I can, and it can explain it for me. For me, what, what kind of ex explanation do you need? Do you need the explanation of the world? Do you need it from God? That's what you have to think about. Where are you getting your explanation from? Hey, look, if you don't understand something in the Bible, what do you do? You ask the author. That's exactly what you do. You ask the author. And then, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you want, ask another person who studies. Don't be one of the, don't be a person that goes around. You know there's guys, look, I, I've been in churches long enough. I've been in TR churches. You know what a TR church is when they believe the Greek and the Hebrew and the original autographs and all that that never been existing. They use the King James, but they don't. Look, they're only giving out salvation messages. The best they got. That's all they can do. They can't really teach you anything. So you're in there and you got nothing coming out. You got nothing. So you know what happens? You go around with those freaking Hebrew guys. You start asking them questions. Really, you're not asking them questions. You know what you're doing? You're testing them. And you're getting nothing from it. You're wasting your time. 
You're wasting your time. Get in the book. He says you're groping around. Verse number 11. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. You know, i got to say something, man. I see this all the time. I don't know if you've noticed it yet, but all these churches are turning to putting doves on their, uh, they're putting doves now up there. Look, we're not following floating doves and stuff like that. We're not looking for doves. You know what we're trying to do? Pick up our cross and follow Him. Amen. It's not about flying around like some free-looking dove or something like that. And just so you know, they always put that there. You know what they're trying to say? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You know what it really? He didn't say that. He said He descended like a dove in bodily form. That means He descended like a dove. It doesn't mean He looked like a dove. I mean, just think about it. If a dove would have came down while he was baptized, everybody went, hey, look at the bird. But now, a guy floats down. And he looks different. Uh, that's going to change everything, I hope. What's that guy floating down for? Now that changes everything. You see what I mean? That's the difference. Amen. He descended like a dove in bodily form. What body did he take? The body of a man. Amen. He says, we were like, like bears and, and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is, it's far off from us. Why is that? Here it is. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. And our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, well, we, know, we know them. We know what we're doing. Larry, you're not ignorant of what you've been trying to do. Nobody's ignorant of that. You know when, you're in, when you have the thoughts. You, have, you know the purposing. You know you're doing it. Sometimes you do it. You just go, well, God will pick it up later or whatever. I'm not going away from this. This is the way it's going to be. Amen? We know what we're doing. Verse number 13, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt. Oh, rebellion. Okay? Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, revolt against the government and all that stuff. Uh, look, people, we, I just take it like this. Don't, just don't get into the silliness. Just don't get into the silliness of it. Look, think about this. If Jesus Christ... When, when, the, when the government, whatever the government says they want to imply on the whole people, okay, don't do it. Don't do it. Why? Well, you know it's something wrong. I have a doctor down there, okay? Why isn't he calling me up? Why don't I get a blood test? Why don't he tell me I have a weak immune system? Why do I need to have the government tell me what to do? Why? They, so they can put a protocol on me? Because that's what they're doing, people. Hey, nobody, nobody got helped from that. That was stupid. I can imagine Jesus showing, what is this stuff? What is this? What are you all lined up for these shots for? What is this mask everybody's wearing? What are you, stupid? What's the matter with you people? That's what would have happened. Look, I'm not trying to, we got, everybody fell for it in some way. We did. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you is, stop watching that stuff. Just stop it. I, I had to stop it. I, it, it took another man to get a hold of me and say, get off the of Fox News, get off of CSNC and CBS, get off of them. Why? They're they're just they're just they're, they have a purpose to what they're saying. They all say the same thing. <coughs> it's a parable, people. It's a parable. You want the parable? It's like this: a, a rich man, a rich man went to a far country, and he wanted to. He said he wanted to help people. So he wanted to, he, he went out and he, he wanted to test the veg, vegetation. The government gave him all these grants to do it. So he built these labs and he got, got these uh, berries and all this stuff. And, but wait a second, he found a virus. Well, he wasn't supposed to be looking for a virus. How would they find it if they were, unless they positioned themselves to look for one? And then when he found it, you know what he did? He called up all the news stations that he owns. Bill Gates owns NBC, MSNBC, and all those. Disney owns ABC and the, and the others. And Fox News is owned by Murdoch, and he owns some others, too. Annenberg was owning the, the Philadelphia Inquirer, the New York Times, and all these others. They're all owned by the same people. And then they start. Boom, 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 boom. The good, the, they get the full strength of the government behind them, talk to their buddies, 
buy stock in those companies, guess what? Next thing you know, you got shots to cure everybody for that virus that he made up. And guess what he gets after that? He gets everything paid for again, and now they're going to pay him more to go research some more. He goes to another country. You know why he went to another country? Because they don't have laws against it, like we do. You can't figure this stuff out. It was pretty easy. It took me uh, it took me months to do it, but then I started to realize it. It's all billionaires. Uh, guess what? You better realize in the book of Revelation, it says that those horns, they were like kings. They're not kings. They're like kings. What are they? They're, they're the oligarchs of the book billionaires. They're the ones that are the kings. There's ten of them, and they're going to be controlling everything. Amen. People don't pick up on that. They're like kings. And after the Antichrist gets in there, within one hour's time, he's going to give them all power. That's what it says. Amen. Get your head into the ball game. Get your head into this ball game. This is a war. Amen. And there's casualties in war. That's why they brought out all those ventilators. There are casualties in war, people. Amen. I don't, you know, I, my wife always says, don't talk about that stuff. And I'm like, but it's the easiest way to show you on a high scale level. This is a war. Amen. And it's a war against the church. They're trying to say it's a war against the public. No, it's a war against you. What does the devil care about? He cares about you. That's all he cares about. Getting rid of you. He doesn't care about all the people. They're already dead. Hell follows them. They're going to hell anyway. He's got them already. Amen. Uh, let's go. He says, uh, he says in verse number 14, and, and judgment is turned away backwards, and justice stands at the far off. For the truth is fallen in the street, and equity uh, cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. <laughs> truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. You know, when somebody finds the truth, you know what happens? They get shunned. Right. That's what happens. Hey, look, man, you don't think it happens? Go in, Right now, go into a church that uses an NIV, and you sit there for a little while, and then all of a sudden, maybe you've been there for months, and then all of a sudden you turn around and say, hey, hold on a second, I found the unleavened bread, and you try to tell everybody. Hey, look, we fa I found it. You need to change. You know what they do? This guy's crazy. He's a troublemaker. He's trying to split the church. Get him out of here. No, he's trying to... You've got all kinds of Bibles in there. He's trying to pick out one so you can unite on it. But you see how they see it? You know why? They're blind leaders, and they're trying to lead the blind. You see? But the problem is that guy who found out the truth, he's no longer blind. <laughs> so he's not going to follow the blind guy unless he's stupid, which happens... <laughs> Amen. He said, what? The truth faileth. And he that departed from evil maketh him a prey. <laughs> and the Lord saw it, displeased him. Verse number 16. And he saw that there was no man. And wondered that there was no intercessor. Now you see where the Savior comes in? He sees this. I got a cure for you. Oh, you, all these things have been, all these things have been making you a mess. I got a cure. God's like, i got a cure for this. Stay with me a little. He says, there is no intercessor. Uh, therefore, his arm uh, brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. Uh, it sustained uh, him. You know, uh, the Lord, the, the Lord uh, is going to use his arm. You know what he's going to use his arm to do? He's going to use his arm right now to save. That's what he's talking about. I'm going to use my arm. What's I'm going to use it to save? I'm going to have it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to show you who it is. It's Jesus. You know, in Exodus chapter 6, he says, I got a name for you. What's that? This is a name going to save you. What's that? It's Jehovah. Jehovah's a name that's going to save you. I am the Lord, he says to them. I'm going to teach you my new name. That's Jehovah. You've got a name for me now. It's Jehovah. You know, now it's Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. For there is none other name under, under heaven written on, uh, uh, that you must be saved. Okay? There's none other name under heaven by which you must be saved. There's only one. That's Jesus Christ. I don't know what, what do you want? What do you what do you mean you got this other guy? I, I, what do you mean you got this? If we got people, they want other people all the time. Hey look, you got these uh these people who think they're like they, they walk around like they're some kind of professional Christian. Uh yeah, oh uh, 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 Jesus, well, you know, you can use your shoe. What do I need to use that for? I got Jesus. 
I learned Jesus all my life. Now all of a sudden I get into this church and I want to be educated and you want me to say things like Yeshua or Yahweh? Just so you know, there is no such thing as Yahweh. Where's that in the Bible? It's it, the tetragram. Y-H-W-H. That's, if you do it right, all it is is Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, uh, what's the last one? Uh, 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 Vahe. Vahe. Jehovah. That's how it's done. It's what? It's Jehovah. It's as easy as that. It's not hard, people. There's no Yahweh. When people do that, what they are doing is idolatry itself. There's one name, and that's Jesus Christ. There's none other name. You didn't get saved by Yeshua. Nobody here knew that name until somebody thought they were educated, tried to put down, think they were better than everybody else. It was always Jesus. Look, Joseph only saved the, his family. Zanaf of Pandeya. He saved. He saved the country. He saved outlining countries. He was the second in charge. It was his title. They changed his name. Amen. Joseph's name in position was Zanaf Pandeya. Hey, look, Daniel was a good man. Daniel, when he went, went over there, he was a good man. But you have to understand something. His name in the public over in Babylon, where he was helping the Jews and keeping them safe, was Balthazar. It's Balthazar that did that. If Daniel would have got out there and went, I'm a Jew, they would have been like, no, we're not listening to this guy. But they listened to Balthazar. Why? He had the title. Amen. It's just like you people. Look, your name is Deanna. Guess what? When you get to heaven, you don't even know what your name is. Amen. Why? Because you get a new name. Right. Amen. That the name she got was was the name her father gave her, her mother gave her. That's a man's name. Right. God's got a name lit over there. What's that? That's the name God's going to give you. There's a new name written down in glory. Yep. In glory. Amen. It's fine. I don't know what it is yet. Amen. I hope it's something good. Been, I felt like I've been called idiot for too long. <laughs> yeah. Verse number 17. Watch this. He says, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet of salvation upon his head. Now watch. And he put on garments of vengeance for clothing. Do you realize what you got there? You got the first and the second coming. Vengeance is in the second coming. In the first coming is salvation. Okay? And was clad with the zeal as a, 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 a cloak. You got the two comings. And guess what? They're not separate. That's why nobody saw it. Like even John the Baptist didn't see it. Okay? Uh, he, look at verse number 18. According to their deeds, accordingly, uh, he will repay fury to his adversaries. He will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay uh, recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, shall lift up the, a standard against them. Okay, all the work uh, that he's going to do, uh, he's going to do it to redeem, and, and guess what? He's going to be putting away evil. He's going to put down evil. He's going to be looking to redeem and to put down evil. That's what he's talking about uh, right there. Uh, and now verse number 20, look what it says. And the what? Well, we already know who it is, right? It's the cure of this. This is the Savior. Look, God didn't leave you hanging. Oh, your sins have separated you, but i got a cure over here. i got a cure for you. You want to get back to God? It's real easy. He's right there. You notice how salvation, you got to understand, salvation isn't in a process. It's not even in an idea. It's in a man. It's in a man. It's called Jesus Christ. There's the problem. You don't want to go to the man. Hey, look, everybody likes the baby at Christmas time. Woo, woo, woo. We can control the baby. Sit up, Jesus. You know, you got to eat your food, Jesus. I could see Joseph. He got to control of it. But you know something? It's that suffering Savior you got to deal with. Nobody's getting saved by the baby. You're wasting your, you're wasting, if you think that's what it's all about, people, you're wasting your Christmas. It's about a suffering Savior, and you need to speak to that guy. 
Why? That's the one that saves. Amen? He says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. You know what he's looking for? Why don't you bow the knee and receive? Receive what? Him. It's all about Him. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee. And what's that next part? My words which I have put in thy mouth, preacher, and your mouth too. What's that? Shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. This is God's desire. You know what God's desire is? God's desire is for uh, you to have the same spirit that was on Isaiah. Right here. That's what he's saying. I put that spirit upon you to go talk to people. And God says, I got the same spirit that you can have the same one. Hey, look, the spirit of, Eli of Elijah is now on Elisha. The spirit that's on Elisha is now on uh, another guy. And guess what? That spirit is on you too. God wanted to put it on you and you, got, you can get it anytime you want it. What's that? Just do the will of God. Amen. It's the same spirit. Okay? Uh, go to, uh, we'll end with this. Go to Jeremiah 31. The next book over. Jeremiah 31. You see, Isaiah, uh, he was dealing with, is, he was in Judah with Israel going away. The northern tribes that were getting attacked going away. And he was telling them, hey, look, you better look up. It's going to happen to you. By the time Jeremiah comes, what does he say? It's happening now in Judah. If you're going away, you better submit to Nebuchadnezzar coming down. Why? You're done. You've wronged God. It's time to go. You might as well submit right now and, and, and save the people from dying because it's happening. Imagine somebody says that. You're going down. And, and you, you, what are you going to do? Stop it. God said it. Amen? 31, and we'll even look at the 31. 31, 31. This is the same. Behold! The days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husbandman unto them. I took care of them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it upon their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying uh, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them saith the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin uh, no more that's a great promise you get from Israel and guess what else you got it too he gave that to Israel, and he got you in on it. Why? You're grafted in. Now, you're not physical in Israel, but let me tell you something. You got grafted in. Why? Because Jesus was a Jew. But you don't get those promises to the physical Israel. That's weirdos that think that stuff, and now they're messing it all up trying to get the Jews out of Israel. Try that one. Try doing that one. <laughs> you're not going to get it done. Okay? So what we're looking at right here is God says, look, I got some problems right here. You know what the problem is spiritually? You got iniquity, and you got, and it's moving over to transgression, separating you from me. God says, I want you to get back to it. You got to get rid of this. You got to stop listening to these people that are blind leaders. You got to stop going around with these people, uh, you know, and trying to don't get Bible advice from somebody who doesn't read the book. How can you get Bible advice from somebody who doesn't read the Bible? Well, he reads the NIV, but he's a good person. Yeah, get stock advice or something like that. How to work, live in the world. But believe me, people, do not get spiritual advice from people who do not read the right book. They don't have the Word of God. You're not getting the Word of God. This is a truth. This is a how, how, hey, hey, Larry, you were in a church with modern versions. How, how, did, how was the uh, counsel that he gave you? Huh? How was it? The biblical counsel. There was none. You know what that guy taught you every week? How to get saved every single week. Why? He couldn't do anything else. That's as far as he can get. 
That's as far as somebody can get. That's all God's going to let him get. Why? Because he's never going to get into the insides of that book because he ain't got it. And, that, and, and if you've got a guy who doesn't like God's book, you've got even worse. He's despising the truth. That's the sickness of it. Not only are the blind leading the blind, he's sending people to hell in the name of Jesus. That's the bad part. I've had people come from churches in here to get saved and go back to the church telling me, well, he doesn't preach the gospel. They don't preach like you do. And I wanted this person to get saved. My wife and I were sitting there like, so you're going back? I don't understand. Well, my family goes there. Oh, okay, I guess that's the reason. You know, sometimes you've got to walk away from everybody and go the way of God. It's a lonely route to go with God. It's a, it's a very crowded route to go with everybody else. You see? But you'll notice something. As you go along that route, God supplies people along that path that you walk on. Why? We lost every friend we had. And God gave us new friends, and they're better friends. And you guys are a lot better friends than we had before. Believe me, 100%. Amen, 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 amen. Father, we thank Thee. We ask You, Lord, to bless this preaching that we had, Lord God. Thank You for the Savior. Thank You for our, that our hearts uh, have been worked on today, Lord Father. Uh, we thank You, Lord, for uh, the whole weekend, Lord God. We had a great time in, up in Raw Sea this weekend. We had a great time here. Lord Father, this week, this is what this is where I want to be. This is the kingdom I want to be in, the kingdom of the church, man, the kingdom of God. That's where I want to be. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, for good friends to walk that line with, Lord Father. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for 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 all the people you put in our lives, Lord. Uh, me and my wife can say we are loved amongst the, the brethren because we we have just good people around us in, in both churches. We thank you, Lord, for being kind to us and talking to us the Word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that we have a recovery that we can do by getting with thee. Getting rid of that sin that's in between you and I, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for having Jesus Christ to get rid of, to get rid of that sin that's in between. So we can have fellowship with God. We thank you in all things and we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Who's on? Who's on? I got, um, hey, Candace Jake, she's on. Hey, Marilyn's on. Hey, Hi, Marilyn. Everybody wave. Yeah, it's her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marilyn. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Oh, man, I ain't going to say that. Well, Maggie is here. Maggie Lax is here. Hi, everyone. It's good to see Maggie. Say hi. <laughs> Amen.